Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and that's Dobby. We're going to talk about Honeydew, which is a recently released film. I'm not quite sure exactly how far I can go into this without giving too many spoilers, so this might be a relatively quick review, as I do want to keep it spoiler-free because there, um, there's some bombs dropped in this one for sure that you may or may not be anticipating, but you're just kind of like waiting for it to happen. So maybe they're not so much these huge twists, but there's a lot of build up to them. I will say that for sure. The film starts out with Riley and Sam. They're, I, I think they're just dating. I don't know that they're engaged or married, but they're very long term. They're very invested in each other's lives. Riley is working on, I believe it's her master thesis for horticulture, particularly she's focusing on the, I think it's called Sortica or Sortico, the fungus that had invaded the, the crops in the area and it did a lot of damage to the local agriculture and their farming, particularly with cows for, um, for food sources and just like the whole process of how the fungus grows. And Sam is on his way to an audition as he is an actor. So she's kind of just hanging out with him, working on her stuff, just keeping him company, being very supportive and you know, they're out in the middle of nowhere. It's very rural. They decide to set up camp and are then awoken, or I don't even remember if they were sleeping, but you know, the farmer who owns the land comes around. He's just like, um, Hey, th this is mine. Can you guys get out? Like now, can you just leave? And of course, as it is a horror movie, the car doesn't start. There's no GPS. There's really no cell phone signal. So all they can basically do is walk until they find the closest house, which belongs to Karen, who lives there with her very interesting son, Goonie, and uh, do, do as much as they can to try to get some help, try to get someone to come over, look at the car. Maybe they could use the phone to call AAA. She convinces them it's probably the best idea to wait for her friend to come over, take a peek at the car, but they could make themselves at home have a meal with her, and then they they end up staying the night just because dude never shows up, and things kind of get weirder and weirder, and weirder, and, and you you should just watch this film. I'm gonna leave it off there as it is spoiler free. Things, I mean, they're strange to begin with, but they just get more and more surreal and sinister as the film goes on. And then there's that point where you're like, oh, that's the type of movie we're watching. Okay. So I did do a little research when I was watching the film in the beginning when she was talking about the fungus. I don't know why it popped in my head that fungus that essentially caused the hysteria for the Salem witch trials which is called ergot, which I guess is some kind, it's in the same family as the Sordica. And I thought that was really interesting, you know, because you get the vibe during this movie that they, they planted the seed of this fungus that makes you hallucinate and do weird things. And then you meet Karen and her son and Karen is just so off. She's not unpleasant per se, She's very receptive to Sam. She's very welcoming and keeps saying his name and smiling at him very awkwardly, but then kind of ignores everything Riley says, which sucks. That's got to feel weird for her. And you just kind of like, is this woman tripping balls? Like, is that why she's acting so strange? What exactly is going on here? Is it just the area people are like a little off or what's the case? I'm just waiting for the cat behind me to start licking his butthole and then I have to stop filming. So I'm just going to keep darting my eyes over there just in case because, sir, we don't need that. Thank you. So what did I like about this film? I really liked the atmosphere it created. It was really uncomfy. I did not feel like I could really relax at any point. Even, you know, when they're sitting there eating dinner 
and Goonies watching cartoons. Cartoons are always like a safe spot in my heart, at least. And I did not feel safe. I felt like something was going to happen and I felt really tense, which is great because aside from, you know, like a lot of gore or a lot of violence making you uncomfortable, I feel like really subtle ways to make you feel uncomfortable is maybe even a better way to approach it in a film, especially if you can drag that feeling out through the entirety of the film. That's very, it's a very effective filmmaking. I liked, I don't know, I liked the, the character of Karen a whole lot. She was just so freaking weird. And just the way she'd be talking and smiling and then stop reacting completely and just be smiling creepily. And Riley and Sam were just kind of like, um, uh, Karen, are you good? And then it would take, you know, 30 more seconds for her to be like, anyways, do you guys want cupcakes? It, it was just, it was funny, but it was also like, again, it was uncomfy, which was great. I like that this wasn't, so from the trailer, if you have watched the trailer, they really don't give away anything. And that was what really got my interest in the film. Someone in a local horror community for our specific area in Pennsylvania had posted about it and was like, hey, has anyone else seen this movie? Because I really need to talk to someone about it. Like, please let me know. I need, I need to DM her and just be like, girl, let's talk. I'm ready. And let all the spoilers out. I, I haven't really talked to too many people that have seen this movie that I could have like a really thorough conversation with just like, what the fuck did I just watch kind of thing. Um, it's a very vague trailer. There's a lot of, it made me think of, you know, I guess Texas Chainsaw Massacre, how it's those like short scene bursts where you're like, wait, what, how does that all go together? How does, how does this make a cohesive movie? And maybe to some, it didn't make a cohesive movie, but I, I felt like it was good. I felt like maybe there wasn't like a super big resolution at the end that it's kind of like, this is still, this is still going. It's still going somewhere, which is fine. That's also unsettling. It, I, yeah, I, I can't pinpoint too many likes that I had. I guess the effects were really good. I liked the way they went about things. It was pretty gross. The long standing scenes of things you really don't want to see, but that part of your mind is just like, keep watching because you're a Cretan and you like watching these things. So I'll go to my dislikes. I could not get myself to care about Sam or Riley, which sounds really bad. It just, Sam's character was just so whiny and acted childish. Like that's supposed to be a grown human and you're acting like this. There was at one point she was saying that she, you know, was proactive in changing his lifestyle and diet because his lipid panel results for his cholesterol were very troubling. And she obviously cares about him perhaps more than he cares about his own health and implemented all the, all these things to make his numbers better, to make his life better. And he just was such a baby about it. And I get it. That's hard. That's a hard decision you have to make for yourself knowing, well, I can't do these fun things or eat these fun things because it's going to make me worse. But like, that's, that's kind of being an adult and making those decisions. And it just seemed like she had to parent him a whole lot, which was very unattractive and didn't make me really feel a lot of any sympathy for him, I suppose. And you're, you have that seed planted, like I said, with the fungus. And at one point they're, I don't know if they get in an argument or they're just like kind of shitty with each other. Like they're both upset at the situation that they have to stay at the house. And he like storms out of the room and goes upstairs and sits in the kitchen with Goonie and is just like, taking all this food out of the fridge and eating it and he's eating the cupcake and you're just like, oh, that's where that fungus could be. Like he's gonna, he's gonna start 
hallucinating and all this stuff and you're just kind of like waiting for it but then you also don't really feel bad when hey sir could you not i'm just gonna turn you no you're good okay <laughs> you don't really feel bad for him because he can't uh-uh nope <laughs> go ahead you're good gift you have privacy you don't really feel bad for him because it's like he he knew what he was doing but like also did he really know what he was doing because they didn't know that there was still the the fungus in the wheat flour but i don't even know if that's what it was maybe karen dosed them with something that she was currently enjoying given her behavior you, you don't really know on the other hand i didn't really feel that much sympathy for riley's character either I don't know if it was just the way they were supposed to be written. It was just such a different take on the movie because I feel like the most sympathy I felt for any character was Goonie. And he didn't speak a single word pretty much. I just, I felt bad for him having seizures and he was just kind of disconnected. And you get a little glimpse of him very early on in the film and you question a lot of things and then they do explain it later on which is a bummer definitely but i don't know i thought karen karen's acting was great the the actress that portrayed her did a really good job i learned that sam's character is played by steven spielberg's son which i honestly okay that's cool i guess who doesn't love a good Spielberg film or a good Spielberg son? I can see his foot through the chair. Does anyone else see that here? This tiny little... There's some beans here. Why always when I'm filming? Um, I felt like sometimes I really liked the soundtrack to the film. Or the just the, the weird sounds that were happening. Sometimes I felt like it was overdone a little bit too much. Like if a scene was already tense, you didn't have to just overburden it with strange sounds. I know that's a common trope in a lot of modern horror. And I don't mind it. You just have to know when to use it appropriately and not overuse it, I suppose. Yeah. This is a strange film. I, I I did enjoy it. I was just a little confused by some of the choices that were made. There's a weird dream sequence that we don't get another weird dream sequence. And I would have loved like a bunch of those. That would have been great. But I guess it makes sense because they were only there. It feels like one night. So why would you have that many? But like naps, you take naps. You like, I don't know. You could have thrown some more in because I did enjoy it. It was bizarre and strange and it had a lot of allusion to the movie it alluded to a lot of things that we weren't completely set in concrete yet about it's just talking about this movie is like talking about fight club like how much can you really give away but like it's very obvious also kind of let me know if you've seen this movie what do you think i would probably give it i don't know I would definitely watch it again. I think I would give it at least a three out of five. I thought it was bizarre. I thought it was gross and grungy and strange and a little confusing and a little dreamlike and I had a good time watching it. I know maybe the pacing was a little bit off for me. I have a short attention span. We've addressed this in the past, but I, I would watch this again definitely. I rented it on Amazon Prime and I regret not buying it from Amazon Prime, but I'm also going to try to get a physical copy just to have. Um, yeah. Have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts on this movie? Do you like modern horror? Are you a fan? Do you prefer older stuff? What's your favorite era for horror ever? I would have to say that mine's probably the 80s. Um, lots of good zombies and just weird uh, shit come out of that era. I also really like the 90s horror, but I'm really, really into the modern horror stuff that we've gotten so far, and I'm excited to see where that goes. Can't wait to see Don't Breathe 2. Can't wait to see the Candyman remake. I just found out that Elijah Wood is going to remake the Toxic Avenger, so I'm pretty excited for that. I'm a big Greasy Strangler fan, so I like what he's done so far. I don't 
don't know what this cat is doing behind me, but if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Please don't forget to follow me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Reanimator. You can find my solo reviews as well as reviews with the groom in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. And I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. You could give the video a like if you did enjoy it. You can hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. I have not filmed in like forever by myself. So I'm like completely lost with my outro. But I'll see you later, guys. Bye. Check, 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 check. Purr.